We all remember Toki, don't we? I remember this game on the Amiga which my cousin had, and I thought it looked amazing. Of course, I had to get it for my Mega Drive. But is it any good? Well, let's have a little look. The story is a standard kidnapping plot where your missus, Miho, gets taken by Vuki Medlo. And you just stand there in your wife runs. But you don't stay a ripped hunk of a man for long. Oh no. You get turned into Kishigum, one of Vuki Medlo's ape like minions. Toki can jump and spit fireballs, hence why this game is subtitled Going Ape Spit. You can fire in six directions, but not in a downward direction. Other power-ups can be collected along the way, which are more powerful, and some can be charged up to fire one big ball. The levels themselves are that of many other platform games. There will be hazards everywhere, and enemies in the air and on the ground. Toki can jump to platforms and climb up vines, as well as swing from vines. Each level has a boss which follows a pattern. They can be defeated easy enough once you know where they're going to go, and what they're going to do. But is this game any good? I haven't played this game for years, and I remember it being good. Then I played the HD remake, and I hated it. But for this video, I revisited the Mega Drive version, and although it's frustrating in places, it's actually a good game. Now, it's not without its flaws, of course. Some enemies are pricks, and you'll lose a few lives working out what their movements are. You can jump on enemies, but you tend to forget about this ability because of the firepower you have. However, it's just easy to shoot them most of the time. Some will explode once you've killed them, and they fire out projectiles which will kill you if you're not expecting it. One hit death is a downfall here, and my biggest gripe with these games. You need to be on the ball at all times, or you're screwed. I set the difficulty to easy and maxed out lives and continues, and to be fair, I got further than I ever did in the past. There are cheap bastards though, which you'll need to remember where they are. This happened to me a lot when I was moving vertically through a stage, and you don't know where there's an enemy above you until it's too late. There are no checkpoints either, which again, pisses me off no end. The times I got close to the end of a stage, then got killed, was too much for my liking. The music is brilliant, although there aren't many tracks, so you'll hear the same track a lot throughout the game. It's not a bad thing, but a different track per level would have been nice. The sound effects are okay, but nothing special, and the graphics are excellent, with some very nice parallax scrolling throughout. And because I thought I liked the game so much back in the 90s, I saw the HD remake for the Nintendo Switch at a very cheap price and thought, yes, I'm going to love this game. But I didn't, and here's why. On first impressions you'll think, this looks amazing, and you'd be right, it does look stunning. But amazing graphics doesn't make a game amazing. The one hit death rule still applies which is shit, but what they have done is taken enemies from all levels and thrown them at you within the first few minutes. Take these ghosts that throw spears. They don't appear until the later stages of the game, but here they are making sure you don't get far. This game is insanely hard for a remake game, and it makes the original look like child's play. The remake, although it looks great, is actually shit. The Mega Drive version is a very good game. It's a hard game, that's not to be ignored, but it's still a good challenge that can boil your piss in some places, but you can still get past it with some perseverance. I gave up on level 6 because I saw my ass with it and switched it off, but it's something that I'd play again, even if it's just for a few levels. Thanks for watching. If for some strange reason you like my videos, please consider subscribing so I don't feel so unpopular. Do you know what I mean?